UW360 is proudly supported by BECU, a not-for-profit, member-owned credit union. Pacific Office Automation, copy, print, workflow, and IT, problem solved. Global health is an issue that touches us all. Billions of dollars are spent each year to treat illness and save lives. But does that effort and money produce results? How can we pinpoint aid to the diseases that most require attention? The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, or IHME, is an independent research center at the University of Washington. They're collecting data from all over the globe to answer these questions. Their massive study is called the Global Burden of Disease, or GBD. What we do to try to quantify all the world's health problems is we try to find all the data that we can possibly find on 291 different diseases and injuries and for 66 different risk factors. Once we get all that data, we then try to analyze it using the most appropriate uh, statistical methods to come up with actual estimates of you know, who dies from what, who's sick from what, and then put that all together in a comprehensive understanding of people's health problems. Some of the results have been surprising. In Zambia, for example, it was believed that in recent years, malaria mainly caused infant deaths. But the GBD study revealed that the adult mortality rate from malaria is still a problem. HIV is a known issue in Zambia, but the malnutrition data surprised the country's leaders. Our biggest contribution to national policy debate is to actually put things in that comparative light. So to, to remind people that, gosh, you have much more protein and energy malnutrition than your neighboring countries. What's going on? Why is that? And it triggers a, a whole series of discussions that I think would otherwise not occur if you didn't provide the internal comparison between diseases and injuries in Zambia and the comparison to neighboring countries. Making the data they collect visual and immediately accessible to governments and the general public is another mission of the global burden of disease. So when, when we have the data, we have just sheets and sheets, millions of files of different numbers, and we need to find a way to come to terms with how we're looking at differences over time, over space, over age groups. IHME makes it easier to follow data from countries like Zambia. And the malaria epidemic, similar to many countries in the region, increases in the early 2000s, and late 1990s, and then as more time and effort and resources are dedicated to global health, you can see that that starts to pull back quite a bit as we move towards 2010. And here you can see uh, the curve over time, and we focused in on Zambia, and you can see that we really do have this hump here in the, the late 90s, early 2000s that we've started to combat and bring down. The results of the global burden of disease are disseminated to decision makers around the globe. Going forward in the future, there's a lot of things that, that if you also add on to this database will make the information even more useful for decision makers. We've been focused on what are health, people's health problems. But in parallel, if we can also track where money goes, money for medical care and public health, and then you can compare the two and say, look, we're spending a lot of money over here, but we're ignoring this problem over here. That becomes uh, even more powerful for decision makers. So this is the period of time when it's very unlikely that somebody knows they're infected. Nothing is more powerful than knowledge. Using independent, science-based measurement, IHME and their partners are changing how the world understands global health and how it responds. Because ultimately, every number is a human life.